Are you new to networking? Then you're in the right place. I'm Dave Harris with True Cable, and this is Introduction to Network Cables. We're going to talk in elementary terms about three different types of networking cable. Coax cable, copper twisted pair cable, and fiber optic cable. Now we're going to briefly introduce um, coaxial cable because it was mainly the first cable used for Ethernet when it uh, w was first getting started in the, in the mainstream. Um, and so that's why I wanted to introduce coax cable first, um, because it was the first Ethernet cable, so to speak. Um, but also because I wanted to introduce the concept of a cable shield. A coaxial cable has a center conductor, but it also has a shield on the outside of a dielectric insulator. And that shield helps protect the signal that is hopefully traveling through the center conductor from things like static discharge, uh, electromagnetic interference from electrical and radio sources nearby, things of that nature. And the cable shield for that purpose is used in other types of Ethernet cable, specifically copper twisted pair Ethernet cable as well. So you'll see this on coax cable, but we've also got some on copper twisted pair cable to show you. Since we're mostly going to be talking about copper twisted pair cable, um, I'm going to also briefly talk about fiber optic cable. Fiber optic cable, and this is just a fiber optic patch cord, uh, fiber optic cable is uh, made of glass. It doesn't have a metal uh, center conductor, it has a glass conductor. Uh, so fiber is a lot more fragile than other types of Ethernet cable or networking cable, um, but it's also much, much faster, much greater bandwidth, and it can transmit a signal many, many miles, uh, whereas copper uh, systems can only go up to about 328 feet. So many, many new and uh, up-and-coming uses for fiber because of its uh, capabilities. Copper twisted pair cable is what most people think of as Ethernet cable. It has four pairs of conductors. Each pair is twisted uh, with the other conductor in its pair. Each of the four pairs has a different twist rate. Uh, the upshot of all this is that Nowhere along the entire length of the cable, no matter how long it is, are any of these conductors ever parallel to another conductor. And that cuts down on crosstalk between the conductors. Um, and that's what balances the signal and why this is known as balanced twisted pair cable. And like I said, this is what's mostly used as Ethernet cable today. All three types, coax, copper twisted pair, and fiber, can be bought in two different ways. Uh, you can get bulk cable. This was pulled off a bulk roll, uh, had a thousand feet on it. These are all examples of bulk fiber, not bulk fiber, I'm sorry. These are all examples of bulk cable that were pulled off of a roll that has not been terminated. You can also get Ethernet cable in, in the form of a patch cord, a patch cable. Here's an example of a copper twisted pair patch cord. It's already terminated. It has plugs on each end already. Uh, that is emblematic of a, of a patch cord. You can get coax patch cords too. I don't have one here, uh, but it looks pretty much like this with 
connectors on the end. Network cables are available with different types of jackets for different situations, different use cases, different environments. Plenum jackets are used where the environment is an air handling space, where there's positive air pressure and uh, gases can be pushed from one part of a building to another. Um, riser cable is interior cable, indoor cable that's not used in plenum spaces. Also, there are uh, jackets for outside cable, outside plant. Outdoor cable, unlike indoor cable, has a jacket that's made out of a polymer called LLDPE. Um, don't worry about the, the big word. It just means that it uh, is impervious to water and uh, it's uh, resistant to UV degradation, degradation from UV light. So it's going to be used outdoors. Um, also, there are direct burial varieties, which uh, can be either filled with a, a gel that uh, uh, repels water or has a water blocking tape. Um, this is an example of a cable that is both shielded and outdoor. In addition to the shield and the LLDPE jacket, this particular cable has a water blocking tape in it. So this cable is suitable for direct burial. So both gel filled cables and cables with water blocking tape can be used for direct burial applications. Gel filled is usually a better choice when the cable is expected to be submerged for any length of time. Plenum jackets, outside jackets, direct burial jackets, and riser jackets are also available for a fiber cable, um, depending on your environment. How do you choose which copper twisted pair cable variety you want? Well, there are three considerations. The first consideration is what is the network environment? Meaning, what are the needs of the network equipment and where is it placed? What are the distances involved? What is the speed the network is going to need? That will help you choose which category of cable, category 5E, category 6, category 6A, depending on the network environments. And within that choice of category, maybe plenum, maybe riser, maybe outdoor, uh, those are all available too. You also need to consider the physical environment. Where is this cable going to go? If it's going outdoors, it needs to be outdoor jacket. If it's going underground, it needs to be a direct, direct burial cable with not only the outdoor jacket, but the interior components that are necessary for a direct burial. Um, if it's going into a plenum space, an air handling space, then a plenum cable jacket needs to be chosen. Uh, other than that, if it's indoor cable, choose riser. And don't use riser outdoors. If it uh, is exposed to um, sunlight or water for any length of time whatsoever, uh, it won't last very long at all. We're talking about a lifetime in months instead of years. So know your uh, environmental considerations, know your physical environment, and make your choice accordingly. And the last consideration is the electronic environment. By electronic environment, I mean what kind of electromagnetic fields are present. If there's AC equipment or AC cables close by, electromagnetic interference is a consideration and you should opt for shielded cable. Um, if there are large radio frequencies in the environment, Again, you should opt for shielded cable. 
if you are uh, hanging the cable between poles or between structures and air can move over it, well, it'll pick up static electricity. And again, you'll need shielded, a cable, shielded cable for this particular electronic environment. So these days, if you're choosing network cable, you're most likely looking at copper twisted pair cable. And remember, when you choose this cable, three factors, the electronic environment, the physical environment, and the network environment. Keep those three things in mind. They have all the information you need to make the proper cable choice. I hope this is helpful. Please like and subscribe. And if you like this material, please join us at the Cable Academy at TrueCable.com. Happy networking. Well, thank you very much for watching the content. Oh, and by the way, are you considering just using any indoor cable outside? Don't do that. Please check out this video here about outdoor cable.